You don't see this happen every day now, do you? All right, here we go. I suppose I'll make a quick remark here. Welcome back. Um, yeah, we've not seen an incident of this scope in a long time, uh, if ever. So uh, I appreciate the tremendous effort of the Leechus team to react to this incident. Yeah. Yeah, this, evidently, this was captured the morning of the fire. I was surprised to see this happen. Um, I think everyone was. And um, I did know there had been previous conversations that uh, Lee Chess does backups. Lee Chess has responsible sysadmin, so... Um, yeah, thankfully there were off-site backups. Thankfully, there was replication to keep all the critical systems in place. Um, what was lost were some puzzle ratings, so, you know, in the grand scope of things, I think uh, uh, Lee Chess did the right thing. Is that personal equipment of Lee Chess? Um, now, this you can see here on the crate here, it says OVH Cloud. That is not a Leechus building. There is not a Leechus building. This is uh, the OVH cloud hosting provider uh, that Leechus works with. Yeah. All in all, Leechus handled this disaster as well as any company ever could have, unless, like, Leechus had, I don't know, 100 to 1,000 times more money and things and could have done things with lots and lots more replication, etc. But, um, yeah, Leechus operates in a responsible manner with its budget. Uh, the fact that we only lost some puzzle ratings is good. And, yeah, uh, overall, I think this uh, disaster was very well handled. Uh, the opening Explo explorer is going to be back up, who knows when, but probably fairly soon. Um, yeah, so I'm impressed just how well, uh, even in spite of something like this, Lee Chess uh, prevails. It's truly impressive. And so now we get to start the meme. The meme being, hey, do you have uh, fire insurance for puzzle ratings? Um, and... What better way could there be to ensure your rating than to get good at puzzles? So we're going to practice getting good at puzzles. Because, you know, that's logical, right? Um, I'm not saying it's proportional, just that there is some thread of logic that you could somehow follow through all this. That, you know, if you got really good at puzzles, uh, that's kind of an insurance against fires, right? Um... I think the moral of the story is don't worry too much about your puzzle rating. Um, but also, perhaps, if people really are super worried about puzzle ratings, I mean, how hard would it be to start a uh, insurance policy for this sort of thing? As absurd as the idea is. Um, so we are practicing getting good at puzzles. So white threatens this thing. I probably need to take the pawn. Like, pawn takes pawn. Right? Yeah, well, Leechus had backups and replication and everything set up in advance of the incident. Um, so, like, you will not find <laughs> anybody as prepared as Leechus was for this sort of thing. Uh, so it just shows that, yeah, the folks that work at Lee Chess or volunteer for Lee Chess, uh, understand what they're talking about, which it's impressive. Um, uh, 
So. Yep, good morning, good afternoon, whatever time it is for folks. Over here, it's morning for me. So I'm trying to figure out. Like, here's the threat. I could move the bishop back, but then the knight can move. Oh wait, I'm winning the... No. So my little trick here is that if there's if this check does not occur, then I'm threatening bishop h1, h2 check, knight takes, and I win the queen. If I move the bishop back, suddenly I can no longer try to win the queen with h2 check. So that's kind of weird. Um, I have no idea what to do here. Let's find out. That's not the move. Also not the move. Also not the move. Probably not b5. All right. Seven, eight, nine, um, ten. Okay, we made ten attempts. All ten were wrong. Eleven? Okay, there it is. Cover the square. That's clever. Oh, can't know. I mean, that's a good question. Yeah, I don't know either. I'm assuming the latest version, but I can't really know. For the last two years, I've had difficulty testing it, so... Um, I've gotten helpful feedback, such as, uh, don't introduce bugs, but um, and do frequent testing, but no, not that frequent. Um, so I, I didn't really know what to make of some of that feedback. Um... But yeah, probably the latest master version is probably the best. I just have no way of testing it, really. Um, so I can't really know which one's the best without doing the tests. But also, I don't have the resources to do all the testing myself, and have been encouraged not to submit every single update of the engine to the testing cluster, because that's not helpful for anyone either. Um, so I'm debating queen takes pawn and this queen check and the knight moves and this doesn't really help me in any way uh, oh what I should remark though I, uh, is that there is a new engine on the horizon called fairy stockfish that is already showing very strong performance overall so uh, hopefully we'll be able to completely phase out my engine and not have to worry about it ever again. Um, that's the hope. And it's actually got like a funding model and sponsors and stuff like that, so... Um, whereas I would not have asked for such a thing, uh, this maintainer wisely does ask for such a thing. Uh, so, I think in hindsight, probably I should have asked. Um, so a bishop takes, king f8, queen h6, king e8, ain't nothing I can do. Um, yeah, we're just gonna try this check. Alright, but here, it can't possibly be this check, because nothing, like, what in the world could you possibly do after the check in the knight blocks? There's just nothing there. Um h4, h5, etc. looks tempting, but then all the other pawns start falling and the rook is loose. Um, bishop g6, black just takes the bishop. Oh, we check and then we bring the bishop out to win the knight. Our king is vulnerable and we lose the rook. Did anybody know the cause of the fire? Um having flammable things I think would cause a fire, right? And if the data center's flammable, I mean All right. Uh you download Fairy Stockfish turned out to um hmm. Yeah, I don't know. There is a whole Discord dedicated to Fairy Stockfish. 
Um, I've seen some test results. In many cases, it is stronger than my bot. Uh, maybe not in every case just yet, but, like, I don't know. It's got a funding model. If people want stuff to happen, it'll get done. Um, let's try this. That's not the move. This is the move. No idea why. Bad puzzle. All right, next one. Um, yeah, unfortunately, unlike some other puzzle site, um, you can't just say, show me... I mean, you can ask the engine for an analysis. Uh, it's just not the most convenient thing. So, like, some sort of button sh saying, show me the English explanation as to why this is the correct answer, and other answers are not correct. That doesn't scale well, but it's also not part of this site. So I think it's H4, G4, no wait, if, after H4 and G4, pawn takes en passant, um... There's not another four to play. We've run out of all the fours after h4 and g4. And pawn takes en passant. Yeah, there's just nothing there. If king to if after h4 the king goes here, you just take this pawn with check. And that looks too fun. So but if it's not pawn h4, what could it possibly be? I have no idea. I mean, if I take the queen, bishop takes, and there's nothing there. Could it possibly be bishop takes pawn? Bishop takes, obviously bishop cannot recapture here, because that defends the queen. So this would kind of induce king takes, and then you could start checking the king and hope that there's a mate here somewhere. I mean, it can't be anything else, so this has to be it. Um, now this bishop check doesn't lead anywhere. Hmm. Wait, how do I get my queen out of this so I could win this bishop? Queen h4, king f7, queen h7, king f6, like, that doesn't lead anywhere. Um, yeah, I'm not seeing a little tr there's gotta be some trick here somewhere. Some way to win, like, even winning a single bishop here would not be enough to win the endgame. We have to win more than a bishop. But how? How do we do that? Um, bishop e5, bishop takes, bishop g5, king takes, rook takes pawn, bishop takes, queen takes pawn, king takes, queen takes queen, Bishop takes, like, none of these things work. The only candidate that makes any sense is queen h4, but I don't see any... Oh, then there's bishop g5. That's the trick. Yeah, so the king moves, and then you have this to follow up. Um, this puzzle ends too early. I get that there are, like, multiple solutions after whatever black plays next but puzzles should be allowed to have multiple solutions so that's a bad puzzle um all right black is threatening rook here check <laughs> this is strange so I'm looking, if my pawn were to promote, and this rook had taken on f4, uh, black could play rook f8, rook a1 wins the rook on f8, so black could play instead king e7, and there's not any fork with the king here, rook there. This queen on h8 cannot fork these two pieces. 
Meaning if I were to do something like playing king h3 here, trying to reduce rook h1, bishop h2. Um, if I play king h3, black just takes the bishop, and there's no winning this rook on f4. And there seems not to be any way to win the rook on g1 either. I think what that all amounts to is that because king h3 is out, because the bishop's hanging... Uh, these are our candidate moves, um, which we'd be inclined to play anyway, but uh, king f2, I'm thinking rook h1 refutes king f2, so let's go to king h2. Black does a cheeky bishop promotion. I'm amused, like, why? Why is this part of the main line of the puzzle? Yeah. I still think, like, puzzles should be allowed to have multiple solutions. Like, if you go to any piece of literature... I'm sorry, any is a strong term, but... Quite a few pieces of literature allow multiple solutions be it books or magazines or CD-ROMs or, you know, even Bobby Fischer teaches chess. I think both the book and the CD-ROM had puzzles that had multiple solutions. And so we're talking about something that dates back quite a while. Um, so... Anyway, I want to play this, but I can't do that because this bishop's in the way. I think it's expected that I'm just going to take the bishop, and that's why I promoted like this. All right. Um... So for interactive analysis, you can have only one solution. Yeah, that's unfortunate too. Yeah, I mean, we are talking about puzzles here. Um, so we're talking about uh, sharp positions. That's the nature of most of these tactical puzzles, is that they are sharp. But I think you'll find, even in your own games, that this isn't as simple as some players might think it is. Like, when your favorite YouTuber, who relies on an engine for a living, um makes comments about, well, you can't do this because this is the one reason why you can't do it. I don't think reality is as black and white as that about this game. Um, I think uh, with tactics, there sometimes could be multiple reasons why a, uh, you're winning or you're losing in a given position. It's not because of just one solution for the entire game. Often there's more than one, even in tactical positions. Um, it doesn't lend itself well to broadcasting or to videos or anything like that. That chess is complicated, but um, that kind of is the reality that, you know... Allowing only a single solution severely limits the puzzles that you can look at. Um, Alright, why is it not g4? Like, what in the world prevents g4 from just winning the queen? Or is there something better? This is exactly what I'm talking about. Although, here there's probably some stupid reason why g4, which seems obviously to be winning, maybe does not actually win here. Against a human, g4 would probably work. Do we just take here? Yeah, 
And then there's this tactic. And then we have to... That doesn't work either. Well, this time, I should just take the knight. I'm a little bit tired. Um... Yeah, tactics ratings aren't competitive because, like, it's the most cheatable thing ever. Um, so there's really no point. Um, I mean, how would you prove that somebody... I don't know. That's my own take on it, not Lee Chess's. But... It just seems... I mean, what can you do? Alright, this is simply mate. Check. Mate. That was easy. Alright, here... I mean, taking the bishop is the obvious candidate move. And I guess your king goes up to d6 and wins the d-pawn and then promotes the c-pawn, right? It's that simple. That's not the move. Okay, I don't have patience to look at that. There's some justification somewhere in there. Go figure it out. Um, yeah, maybe I should do the puzzle storm thing if I'm not feeling super patient to do puzzles in general. Storm could be still a, fuzzle, a fun thing to do. So, yeah, I was expecting bishop takes, rook takes g7. Instead, black has defended against the obvious threat and just surrenders the bishop. Alright, so let's take a look at Puzzle Storm. Woo! This should be a bit easier for the most part, or for this beginning part. I like the new sound effect. I don't know if it comes through clearly enough. Um, but yeah, the new sound effect's really pleasant. Or sonorous, or whatever you want to say about it. Free Bishop. I, would, I did try downloading the keyboard extension, source code, and all that. Could not get it working. Uh, I don't know why that moves any good. I just played it. Um, I just assumed it's probably right. Oh, I could have promoted to a rook there. That would have been funny. Uh, this is free queen. Not really free, but... Um... 16 puzzles in, we're still getting mate and one problems. Nice. Oh, this one's not a mate and one, it's mate and two. Alright, our queen's hanging. Probably should do something about that. Hey, it's not a mate and two problem. In fairness, if you don't sprinkle some mate problems in there, then they'll just expect that none of them are mate problems. Um, so you do have to have some kind of a mix there, uh, otherwise it becomes a little bit too predictable. All right, winning the queen for rook and bishop doesn't seem worth it. I want to win this rook. This is weird. This is seriously weird. <laughs> so if I take here... There's no follow-ups. I have to do this. I don't believe in it, but... Uh, oh wait, I'm not giving up the bishop. That's the key point. Okay, yeah, I got impatient. Their refutation to my move is obvious. Alright, so let's check. And we want a queen. We want a queen and a rook. Nope, not that rook. This one. Because, you know, that's going to happen in a real game. You have to be ready for when your opponent just hangs a rook for no reason in a real game. Alright, I have no idea what that one was about. Yeah, I think this just goes to show 
that since these tactics are from real games, some real games are just played as blitz, and perhaps the player should not be playing blitz if it means that they're just going to lose the game and then get on, play the next game and lose that one too. Um, like, all right, well, this is funny. Yeah, that was a good tactic. Lots of fun tactics here. Wait, what? Ah! They did pawn takes, I would have had a mate. No, okay, I missed queen g2 mate. I was looking at queen h1. Alright, what did I miss? How did I add... Oh. Uh, I have a user style. Check on my GitHub. Um... I don't have a good way to link to that right now. One second. Uh, is this the right URL? Yeah. Check out my user styles here. I did have a short URL that links directly to it, but um, the website that does the hosting for that um, I forget what the situation is, but they keep throwing up more and more ads on their site. And so now my short URL is broken and I don't have a way to fix it. Alright, I win a knight. This wins the queen. This wins the queen. This wins the queen. This wins the queen. This does not win the queen. Alright. We're going to win a queen again. Stop win a queen. I feel like you could have a exercise that is queen or no queen. Does this tactic win a queen? And make that just the whole point of the exercise. And guess whether or not you're winning the queen. Obviously this would only work for positions where there is a queen. Um, but then you could have like similar exercises, mate or no mate, like the sky's the limit, isn't it? Free pawn, free rook, been there, done that. Um, wait, my rook's hanging. Do I care? Probably not. All right, but how do I resolve this situation? This is the tricky part. Rook c1, pawn takes rook. I think we take the rook and then promote the pawn. We'll never know. That was a tricky puzzle. I don't know if that was mate or not. It felt like it was mate. Uh, free rook. All right. Wait, what? Oh, mate in one. Okay. This is awkward. Mate in three. Um, not a mate. Not that I see. Okay, that's awkward. So rook h7 is the natural move here. King e8. What could you possibly do after king e8? Is there seriously a mating net here? That is cool. So if there's a mating net and involves like rook dd7, um, I think everybody guesses the correct answer to that, but it's not immediately obvious why it's correct. But in that case, there's only one correct answer, too. Um, all right, we're in something of a mate net threat here. I don't see how we respond to it. I 
That doesn't make any sense. I guessed it anyway, but it doesn't make sense. All right, no idea. Three something, take the pawn. Slow puzzles? Oh, wow. Wait, that is nice. That is a good filter. <laughs> because this allows me to show you guys the puzzles that I was stuck over. Um, yeah, this is something I was going to complain about. Like, I didn't have a way to show this. And there's just too many puzzles, and how do I show you the ones that were the most interesting? Um, I mean... So it depends on your definition of slow, but anyway. Um, this one looked straightforward enough. Um, this here, I just had a brain fart and didn't see that the queen was hanging. This here was actually complicated. So I said this, and then I said take the rook. What I forgot here is that after night takes, night takes, I'm up a night. Um, that's what I forgot. So how many tabs? Yeah, I can close this browser tab. Um, if I go over here, well, this one was really cool. Rook DD7 forces mate on account of Rook A7 or similar, or G7. Like, there's no way black can deal with all these threats. Even black's promotion threat does not cancel out all of these. It would be a different situation if black had control of the e-file. Like, if these, if somehow uh, black had the rooks doubled in this way, then they could just play rook e7 to break all the mate threats. But absent this kind of rook battery, there's just not a way to break all the threats. Um, so let me show you. Like, if white just does nothing, and black manages to double their rooks, and white's again doing nothing, uh, and then... Um, in this kind of situation, a move like rook c8 can sometimes break the mate threats, too. Um, if the king's already attacking this rook here. If white's done absolutely nothing, like, then sometimes doubling the rooks or a rook to the back rank can also break the threats without hanging the rook. Um, that's not at all what we're looking at here, but I'm just saying, like, if you find yourself facing this kind of mate threat, um, one way to get out of it would be to double your rooks and break it with both rooks. It's uncommon enough, but yeah, that was a good puzzle, surprisingly. Uh, this one, what was this one again? We're in check, we have to do this. And then I was saying this has to be the right answer, because there's no alternative. Wait, what's the nature of this evaluation? Is this just a... Is white winning this? Knight f3, queen takes pawn. What's going on here? Rook d6, no. Knight f3, queen takes pawn, rook e7. E oh! Wow. <laughs> I mean, when there's three lines here, this engine is doing making some pretty weird recommendations when you're doing multi-PV search. But the gist of it is something like this. And white's threatening rook a7. And black's going to have to surrender material. So even though right now material's even, um, black's king is too exposed. That is cool. Who would have thunk it?
Uh, yeah, rook d7 is not a capture and it's not a check, so they call it a quiet move by default. That's uh, just the terminology they use for chess problems. Um, so, okay, I got anxious there. I wanted that to be the solution, so I just guessed it. That's unfortunately not how chess works. But it would have been cool if that move were the answer. Um, wait, what? Rook f8, perhaps? Um, no, free bishop. All right. Okay, what's the deal there? I don't know. Okay, I was gonna block the other check and it never happened. Uh, free rook? Mate and one. Not mate and one. Probably. <laughs> Hopefully. Um. Wait. I could take the bishop, but why is that good? That doesn't look good at all. Yeah, taking the bishop is not right. But what could this be, then? What an awkward position. Let's mate. That's what's going on there. Alright, um... Oh, this is mate. Win the queen. Win something. That's mate. Win the queen. Alright, winning the queen's not good enough there. I finally failed a puzzle. Um, Alright, let's take here. Wait, free bishop. This does not win. I'm sorry, this does mate. There's the mate. That's a cool little puzzle. Queen's not trapped. Um, do we just take on a3? The queen should be trapped, it's just not. Is there some dumb tactical something where my knight was able to make it to c4 and threaten mate? And... Feels like that's the case. Or we just win this bishop. Yeah. Um. Re bishop. Re queen. Nice. Oh, can you imagine if the last few seconds of this mode started counting out the numbers? Wait, did I not get that right? I did not get that right. Okay, what was this? My first move was correct. I missed this Sishin Zug, which I didn't have time to play anyway. Alright, fair enough. Let's try again. Notice how our uh, score reduces every single time we're doing this. Which just means I'm not doing... Wait, I've seen this one before, haven't I? In some book. I mean, it, this looks like the Queen H6 thing. But it's not. White has to have some way to win this. And it's not Queen H6. Well, that's weird. I'm amused here that there is a end run key here. So if you're doing a speed run, the fastest way to end the speed run is just to hit the enter key. That ends the speed run. Um, but yeah, like what in the world is going on here? Obviously, if I move the queen, there's a discovery against their queen. But why is that good? So I've looked at queen g5, queen here, queen here, queen here. Like, 
I'm just not seeing a move. There's got to be a move, I just don't see it. Do you know that same thing where you play a move really fast and get a puzzle wrong and solve it later? Yeah, I try not to do that. Alright, we failed the first problem because I got impatient with it. Uh, maybe that'll like somehow help the rest of the run, failing the first problem. Maybe I'll just get all the problems that make this run so much easier. Uh, I got impatient again. Or I'm just seeding the random number generator. Your pick. Um, Alright. Okay, I got... I'm like super impatient this run. That's pretty funny. Um, well, in one sense, it's amusing. And another, it shows that my mind's not entirely focused on these exercises, which perhaps is for the best. Um, yeah, my attention is so divided right now. Uh, what can be done, though? Yeah, I'm sure even if I'd focused on that one, I would not be able to figure it out. And it just looked really difficult. Alright. Uh, let's check. Let's mate. Let's mate. See, you just have to lose a few puzzles. And then they'll all get a lot easier. Except if you're not trying. Uh, that's a mate. Wait, this doesn't do anything. That's a queen. No, it's not a queen trap. Yes, it is. Alright, that's a one goofy queen trap. Wait, Rook D8 mates, right? I was not expecting a mate to follow there. Which, uh, if there's a mate in that line, it means there's a mate in the other line, too. Which I missed. Okay, what was the deal with this last one? Three bit- oh, my queen's hanging. Oh no, my queen. Alright, let's try, um... Let's try some blitz. Hopefully I'm better at blitz than the puzzle storm thing. Alright, we're gonna play, uh, this... Whoa! Really? Okay, this is a line. It just took me a while to remember it. I'm not sure I completely remember it correctly, but um, it goes something like this. Yeah, and then we castle, and our king is safe. And pawn d5 can be played. I think that's the gist of it. It's awkward because I don't have a knight to defend my king anymore. And my king is a bit exposed. But otherwise, there's just not a lot of excitement left of this position. Um... See, all the excitement in this position comes from my king being vulnerable. Um, do we play like d6 or d5 here or something? d6 looks tempting. We need to let this queen side develop. 
Queen F6 was also tempting, but my position is just so loose. I need to start uh, playing like C6, get the bishop out sort of thing. Um, also, I want to hit the square. Okay. That is possible. And I offer this end game and they don't want it. Understandably. Uh, so I hit the square now. And we break all the mate threats. So this is defended. Oh, that's cute. Um, yeah, actually I have to do something about that. Which does weaken this square. But my king is strong. My king can defend his own castle, right? Right? Hopefully right. <laughs> Otherwise we're in trouble. Um, wait, I'm in trouble, aren't I? Well, that's not good. So if queen takes rook g3, I can't stop the rook takes g6 threat. Um, that's a problem. If queen f6, rook g3 anyway. Um, well, we're going to play the obvious move and see where that takes us. I think I'm doomed. Um, but hey, we're still up two pawns, so there is that. Be yeah, another threatening rook g3, and bishop takes g6, and I have no counter because my... Well, I had no counter. Now I'm just winning. Because they inverted the move order. Um, yeah, because now their bishop doesn't cover this line. Uh, I was severely doomed. And suddenly am just far far better. Um, so, move orders matter. Um, I could take the rook, but that's not good. So, we could just play rook c8, defend the pawn. Or rook f7, really. We're still threatening f2, threatening rook af8, probably, and bishop takes rook and, you know, stuff. Oh, okay, they're not interested in a rematch. Ah, that was a good game. Uh, it's just unfortunate that they missed a tactic. Man, I should have played my Karokan Fantasy variation. That would have been fun. I keep forgetting that that's like a thing I sometimes play. Where I play Pawn F3 in the opening against the Karo. Um, hmm. Let's try this. Wait, I can't do that. That would lose my bishop to queen a5 check. So that's out. This is still defended. Uh, let's take the open file. Oh man, I want to sack for this pawn. You have no idea. 
You have no idea how sack happy I am at this time. It's a blitz game. So, queen h5, bishop takes pawn. That's the plan. That seems fun. <laughs> Alright, they have three pieces hitting the knight. Um, I've got two... De well, yeah, two currently defending it. If I bring the queen over, that's a third. Uh, but then we see knight f6. Alright, so... Oh, I just pinned my knight. That was not smart. On the other hand, I did allow rook c1. So... Hmm. I've been trying to provoke more pawn moves over here. Something like pawn g5, or pawn f6, sure. I've been trying to provoke it, so... Uh, I got what I provoked here. Is it good? Maybe. Maybe not. Let's exchange some pieces and try to find out. So we're hitting the rook. We're going to threaten this next. Uh, let's throw this in first. So force the queen to move once. Queen b6 is probably going to get played. And then we exchange and bring our queen out. And there goes the queen. So we got to play rook c1 for free. I see they have pawn f5. That kind of stifles my ambition a bit. Hmm. So that pawns the target. Written like we get this. So I assume my opponent's gonna do something. But this being loose allows me to activate my rooks with gain of tempo. Everything with tempo. Um interesting. Yeah, why not? How bad could it be? Rook takes, right? You're going to do rook takes. I've given up the open file. And my reason is that your f5 pawn is loose. So I'm hoping that I get counterplay. Uh. So I'm opening up this hole here. Truthfully, maybe I should have played g3. I don't know. It's hard to tell when you're pushing these pawns which one to push. Um, So this pawn's still loose. I can still take this way. I've unpinned my rooks. I'm threatening rook takes rook in case they've forgotten. Yeah, so. Uh, they've defended this f5 pawn finally. And... Oh. Oh. Well, so I control both dark squares and light squares here. Um, hmm. 
queen h5 is a threat. Oh, this racing up the board is also a threat. Interesting. So we control this square, threatening this sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, this didn't go quite how I imagined it. Um... I thought I was winning here. Or at least I had a good position. Maybe it's not so simple. We need to activate the bishop. Um... Wow. Well, that's resourceful. Pawn tensions are always a bit tricky to evaluate. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm just way down on material there. Very good game. Well played. What the hell? <laughs> Oh man, I got outplayed in an endgame. That's not good. On the other hand, there are other good chess players in the world. Um, but wow, did I ever have this? Evidently back here, had I played uh, queen c8 check, or queen d8 check, this would have been okay. I don't understand. takes oh free pawn I missed that and then this is advantageous but not necessarily winning but yeah this helps a lot yeah Woo, that was something yeah I uh, can't really fault you for that um a lot of things happen in Blitz. Oh, welcome. Yeah, that was a really good game. Um, obviously, any game with an opponent over 2200, it's going to be a good game unless I flub it up. But this, like, I had advantage at some points, and then you played very accurately. And you did so because you're rated over 2200. You understand and have studied endgames to some degree. Um, so, yeah, that was cool. Uh, it's not every day that opponents fight back in the end game. Usually I'm able to just, like, I don't know, kick my feet back up on the desk and play out the end game without trying too hard. Yeah. Yeah, that was very nice. Uh, it shows just how difficult it is to win with queens and bishops on the board. If there were a knight here, that could have changed this dynamic a bit. Sorry I played the opening the way I did. Um, this is a bit speculative on my part. Uh, I've not played this particular variation before. Every time in uh, online in these live streams, I tend to try slightly different openings. So we got this really symmetric thing. And I wanted to see, like, is this drawish or is this... What chances does this really hold? And I think while it is even, uh, white does have a slight pull. Uh, yeah. So, oh, yeah, you were out of book on five. And yeah, I recognized that this was not book. I just didn't know what to do about it. 
So you got me off guard too. Uh, the engine prefers C5 here to my move. And that makes sense, because I control all the dark squares here. Um, so yeah, this would be worth studying a bit. E6 is right. It's just this particular thing I've never, ever seen before. So uh, I didn't know what to do against it. And I like the engine suggestion, so in the future I might employ that here. Um, yeah. In many lines, c5 is an overplay. In this particular opening, c5 is actually called for here. Um, but yeah, most of the time, yeah, you'd be not be playing c5, I guess. Um, because, like, generally d4 is easy to undermine with the knight coming out here and hitting that, and e5 happening and bishop takes. But here, d4 is actually protected. This knight is dominated by this pawn. b6 does not really bust this. So, like, there's not a tactical justification to... Um, so, c5 is just playable here. Whereas usually it doesn't quite work out so well. See, so yeah, that's what this is about. We might do one more of these puzzle storms and then call it. Um, so let's have some fun. Yeah, that was a good game. Um, so now we'll get to witness my tactical ability or lack thereof. Uh, yeah, and you know, like, when we're playing those end games, I am trying to find, is there some way I could just simplify this into something I know that's winning? I always have that in the back of my mind there. And in that case, I just didn't see a way to simplify it ever. Which means my opponent was actively thinking throughout that entire end game, or that I just completely missed something. So... Um... In any event, yeah, end games are, yeah, there's a lot to study, and many Blitz players don't appreciate just what resources there can be. I've salvaged quite a few half points over the years, um, even won some lost end games with just really funny tactics. Wait, is this not just? Okay, that was weird. Um, why don't I take the queen? If I take the queen, I get a free bishop. I don't like the end game though. Whatever, it's probably gonna tell me take the queen, take the bishop. I don't like that end game. Still don't like it. Um,. Okay, I got impatient. Impatience, one word. Tired is probably more accurate. Alright, and then over here, that's a fork. And is there a fork here? Nope, there is a mate. Here, there's no fork. This is tempting. With the rook c8. I don't see anything else. But that big timer on the right, it's like super, super distracting. I cannot focus on the puzzles with the timer there. Uh, I need to like invent a layout for this thing where I just cannot see the timer. Or it's just not as prominent. Oh my goodness. Um, my misgivings about timed puzzles aside, like... This particular perspective with the timer flashing right next to the puzzle is a bit distracting. Uh. Yeah, whatever. 92%'s not too bad. Yeah, yeah. Well. Wow. Well, so thanks for watching. Hope we enjoyed all our puzzles here together. That was special.
All right, that's the video. Yeah, let's talk. So, yeah. Um, I developed the engine that is used for analyzing all the variant games on the site. I helped develop some of the variants as well. Um, I helped... Uh, I contributed the infamous if a player wins out and only has a knight or a bishop. Um, that in... Some cases that's a win, other cases it's a draw. We try to do something similar to the FIDE rule, although we're not bound to the FIDE rule. It's just a really good rule that if a player can win and their opponent times out, call it a win. On other chess sites, if you have a winning position and your opponent times out, you might not win that. You might get a draw. On this site, if you have a chance to win, uh, your opponent times out, you get the win. That's how FIDE does it. That's how we try to do it. It's not perfect, but yeah. But yeah, I've contributed some number of features to the site. These days, I mostly just take a look at the feedback forum. And so, uh, try to communicate whatever issues are brought up here uh, to the team. So... Yep. Practice your tactics, study, get better at tactics, and that will serve as a form of insurance against rating loss. Yeah, FIDE rules are actually uh, not trivial. The U.S. chess rules um, about when you get a draw or win are far, far more complicated than the FIDE rules. FIDE rules aren't perfect either, but they do inspire. So, yeah, I'm not saying it follows FIDE rules. That might be a bit strong, but it's similar. So, anyway, yep, study your tactics. That's, study your end games, practice your tactics, learn from your mistakes. Um, yeah.